Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back. I want to talk about something. And that is uh, something that I, I literally just found out about today, a distinction that is, that's actually made in uh, Catholic philosophy, Catholic theology, and it regards uh, the soul after death. So apparently there are two main views about the soul after death, and there's the, uh, it's called the uh, corruptionist view and the survivalist view. And uh, I like how these are named because it makes it really easy to remember. The uh, survivalist view says, that the human person survives after death even though the soul is separate from the body, um, which it would seem to me this it would imply logically that the human person um, is not the body-soul composite, but is the soul. Um, whereas I believe these survivalists, many of them at least, would say that the human being would not survive after death. They would make a distinction between the human person and the human being, um, and the human being would not survive after death because of that separation of body and soul, because a human being is only the composite of both body and soul, of both form and matter. <clears throat> Whereas the corruptionist side of you, side of the, this uh, coin, which is the side that I've taken, and which up until now I actually thought was the only side to take, um, because to me it doesn't it doesn't seem that there should be much of a difference between a human person and human being. I don't, I don't really see a reason for that distinction. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. Um, I need to do some more research into it. But I, I want to come out and say that I've I've said on this podcast before that, or at least I've elucidated that the, this corruptionist view was the only view to take. That uh, that the human person uh, does not survive death, but but the soul does because uh, it's kind of in this unnatural, separate state, right? And and I've considered that to be basically a miracle of God that God holds the holds the soul in existence. Um, separate from the body, and that somehow there's still some sort of individual there. I mean, I guess you could say, via that miracle, God could also keep the human person there as well, and maybe that's like a, a weird view in between uh, in between these two, the corruptionist and survivalist views. But um, I, I was just, I was very interested to find out that there, this is actually something that, that people debate within Catholic philosophy and Catholic theology. Um now I, I'm gonna I'm gonna offer then because I think I've, I've clearly stated my own view being the corruptionist view and what I think about that that the soul or that, that the human person doesn't live on after death because the human person is the body soul composite um, at least they don't naturally survive after death the soul can't naturally survive without the body I guess that's basically what I'm saying um, and thus the human person can't naturally survive without the body and soul being united right so this survivalist point of view. If what they mean is that, <clears throat> that that the soul can be separate from the body and survive from a, a natural point of view without a miracle of God, I would disagree with that quite vehemently, I think. Um, even though, as far as I can tell, even this is a valid view, I guess, within the Catholic Church. This, this is news to me. So I guess I, I haven't been down these rabbit holes enough, <laughs> these rabbit holes of Catholic theology and philosophy enough to realize that th there there are allowances for both sides here. So I apologize. No, again, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but I apologize if I've led people astray by that. Um, by trying to make it seem like there's only one view that's acceptable. Now, why would I defend my corruptionist view? Why why do I not like the survivalist view? Well, because I think it, it again, it, it lends itself to this idea that the human person is, is more is, is more than just the body soul composite. Like the human person is this, lends itself to this idea that the human person is the soul instead of the composite of body and soul. That the human person is the form instead of the form and the matter. Right? So that's really why I, I think that this survivalist kind of an idea is problematic. Um, because I think down the line, you can eventually get to a point where people can say, oh, uh, you know what? Myself is not my connected to my body, and so thus my body isn't pointing me to anything, and it, and it can it can create this sort of dualist idea, I think, and, and I just I see a lot of danger in that thinking. 
I think, A, it divorces our understanding of what reality is from uh, the material world. It makes us start to think in paradigms where, you know, maybe the material world is not as important as the spiritual world. Uh, now, of course, I would make a distinction here. The material world is not as important as the spiritual world, if by that you mean the spiritual world being God, okay? Uh, but I think most people think more of the spiritual world as disembodied spirits, which would be, you know, humans that have died, and their souls are separate from their bodies, and their souls are living on, um, and then also angels. But I think they, they're kind of in a different category. They're definitely, I would argue, in a different category than God, okay? That's like what I would consider the spiritual world. And God is just, God transcends both the material and the physical world. And the, the, or sorry, God transcends both the spiritual and the physical world, the spiritual and the material world. He transcends both of those. Um, like I wouldn't, like God is a different type of being than, than angels. You know, he's a different type of being than angels. And I would categorize angels as spiritual beings. Humans are uh, material beings uh, with, with rationality, basically, is how I would put it. Uh, human beings are material beings with rationality. And then God, God is God. <laughs> okay? Like, God, God is God. He's not a spiritual being, you know? He's not really a being. Um, yeah, he's not really a being in the way that angels or humans or animals or plants are beings, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah, this, this, this distinction is news to me. So I'm going to have to do a lot more research into it to, to really figure this out. But I, I, I want people to know and I apologize if I've made it seem like only the corruptionist point of view, the point of view that I take, is the only one that you can have. But I want to make sure that people know my reservations about this sort of survivalist type of a view. Because um, I really think it's important, particularly in our day and age, for us to stress the importance of the material and our material reality as humans. Because this stresses the incarnation, as I've talked about, the whole the whole Franciscan thesis, the, uh, the primacy of Christ being that Christ would have become incarnate whether man had sinned or not. It was God's eternal plan to become incarnate. Now, of course, not every Catholic has to believe that. Personally, I do, and I will defend it. Uh, I will I will defend it very uh, vehemently. <laughs> and I think that this um, corruptionist view, I think it, it connects nicely with the, the Franciscan school of theology, the primacy of Christ. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I'm, I'm really glad. And, and, and I saw this video on um, the YouTube channel Philosophy for the People. I'm forgetting the guy that runs it. He's a Catholic, and he has a lot of Catholic philosophers on. But uh, Philosophy for the People, go check out their channel. Uh, they have some really, really good stuff. So I'm, I'm just, I'm really enjoying their content. Uh, and I, I want to make sure that I give credit to them. Um, yeah, so he, he had the host had a guy, a, a professor on, I think his name was uh, Dr. Gavin, who's a philosophy professor, uh, and he was the one talking about these sort of distinctions. And I heard that, that on that channel, Philosophy of the People, they have another video that also talks about these distinctions between corruptionism and survivalism um, as well. So, uh, yeah, all right, there you go. Uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, what the next episode holds as for topics. All right, thanks. Oh, uh, real quick, real quick, please feel free to uh, subscribe to any of my podcasts on any of the podcast players. Find me on YouTube. Please subscribe on YouTube if you enjoy this content. Like me on Facebook, like the Catholicism in the Car channel on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, we're all there. Catholicism in the Car, find us. Uh, let's see. And then I also have a Patreon account if you wish to support what I do at this, at this uh, podcast and this YouTube channel. And then uh, you can also support us on anchor.fm. There's a support button there you can click on. I also have links to all of this on my website's support page at www.catholicisminthecar.com. Thanks and God bless.